Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the memorable musical hit, Shari, starring Gordon McRae, and his guest, lovely Vivian Della Chiesa. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. And thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight we're going to sing of gypsy violins and the famous Stradivarius. I shall be a fellow named Irini, who likes to fiddle. And lovely Vivian Della Chiesa will be the charming Shari. My name is Irini. All my life I've dreamed of two things. The perfect woman and the perfect violin. Often in the cool of evening I have closed my eyes and seemed to see the girl. picked up my shiny manufactured fiddle, an ordinary violin without a soul. And I've imagined that it is one of the great violins of the world, a Stradivarius. <laughs> I sail the streams of love impassioned music up to the Isle of Dreams, along through silvery moonlight, past stars all glowing and bright, I float. neither the girl or the strad. And I never realized that both of them were in the little gypsy village of Lawrence Falva in Central Europe. Father, where have you been? In the village, Shari. Flirting with the girls again, I suppose. Certainly not. <laughs> Just letting them have a look at one of the world's geniuses. Oh, Papa, you're... All out of style. People don't like to hear wild gypsy tunes these days. The true violinist, my child, does not play from notes, but from the heart. Ah, Papa, the world has passed you by. Oh, don't talk to me about being passed by. What about you? You are young and lovely. It's time you had a husband. Oh, Papa, not again. Well, my child, I think I shall go in and tune up my beautiful, beautiful Stradivarius. Why? You never play it anymore. Ah, but I must take care of it. 
For one day, a king or a prince may ask me to play, and I must be ready. <laughs> oh, Papa, you're such a funny old dreamer. And you try to be so practical. <laughs> oh, you don't fool me, Shari. You're my daughter, and you inherit my dreaminess. Well, to my violin and to work. Shari, Shari. Yes, little neighbor? Take me in your lap, Shari, and sing me a song. All right. Once upon a time... Somehow it doesn't seem so once upon a time. This is an old, old legend that seems to be happening all over again. In the wise and mighty, and our daughter Blighty, who though she was in her twenties, still refused to wear. Many sooner sought her, of this willful daughter, than to love her standing with a shaking of her hair. At last to call her patient sore, he cleared in solemn voice. A hundred lovers stormed the door, his soul to be the choice. Sailor one, sailor one, and the lovers not a few. Drummer one, drummer one, and the princes there are two. song deserves a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> that dear lady was a kiss fresh from Paris. It was fresh, all right. Well, I'm waiting. Oh, you want another one? I want an explanation. I am a wanderer. I happened to hear you sing, and I couldn't help but sneak up behind you and kiss you on the cheek. Run along, little neighbor. This seems like a dangerous man. Gee, I think he's pretty brave. <laughs> Nor could I help hearing your song. Your father is forcing you to marry. But I want you to know I'm on your side. You keep on your side. Oh, you're lovely. You know, of course, I took an awful chance sneaking up behind you like that. You might have had a glass eye, false teeth, or uh, a husband. You're a very impertinent young man. Please leave. Oh, don't make me go. You know that I've wandered all over Europe. And everywhere the sky was dark, the air was heavy, the hills were black. Then I came into this garden, and it, well, it was like a dawn. Love has wings, which it gladly flings towards the distant sky far above the world of sound. Flying straight 
Seems to me I've found the girl I've been looking for. Now, if I can only find the violin. What violin? Well, they told me an old gypsy fiddler somewhere in this neighborhood had a beautiful violin. The Stradivarius. And if I could only get that old coot to let me use it... That what? old coot happens to be my father. What's going on out here? Oh, uh, this is my father, Polly Rotz. Polly Rotz, the famous gypsy violinist. Oh, I've heard of you and your wonderful music since, since I was a small boy. Now, here, Shari, is a young man with taste. Shari. Shari. Oh, I knew you'd have a beautiful name like that. And who are you? My name is Irini. I'm a poor fiddler who has a chance to play before the king at a special command performance in Paris. But all I have is a creaky instrument that bites me. Where do you play, my boy? That silly stodgy stuff from notes? Or do you play the songs with the people from the heart? From the notes, of course. Oh, you have not yet learned the secret. Tell me, sir, would you consider selling or, or lending your famous fiddle? Don't you dare call it that. A fiddle is a fiddle. A Stradivarius is a violin. As for selling it or lending it, I would just as soon sell my heart or part with my right arm. Then I have a better idea. Why don't you come to Paris and, and play for the king? Paris? Oh, that makes me think of the days and the nights of my youth. <laughs> Especially the nights. Papa, <laughs> you said you were waiting for a king to command you to play again. But I can't go to Paris. Though I, though I am still young, the girls of my youth there are now grandmothers. It would hurt. Well, come to Paris and meet their granddaughters. The granddaughters. I forgot about them. <laughs> uh, I will. No, I won't do that. There are two other reasons. The gout and Shari. We'll all go to Paris together. You take care of your gout and, and I'll take care of Shari. Yes, yes, we'll do it. Good. Turn for the second act of Shari in a moment. So accustomed are we to think of Abraham Lincoln as the great president who labored for a united country that we are inclined to overlook his other contributions to American thought and life. Such, for example, as his part in the development of the railroads, which have done so much to keep this nation one and indivisible. Back in 1832, when there were but 100 miles of railroad in all the United States, Abraham Lincoln, then only 23 years of age, said, and I quote, No other improvement that reason will justify us in hoping for can equal in utility the railroad. End of quotation. It was 20 years later that the real development of railroads began in the Midwest, a development in which Lincoln served as lawyer for two of the earliest and most important railroad companies in that territory. The future president was thus part of that tremendous upsurge of railroad building which in a few years saw the beginnings of more than half a dozen of the large Western systems which have recently celebrated their centennials, or soon will do so. Meanwhile, in those same years, lines from the East were reaching out to the West, and other lines were lacing the Atlantic seaboard states with rails of iron. Still other roads, which have attained the century mark, were underway in the South, while in New England the first international rail connection was being made with Canada. Thus, a century ago, when Abraham Lincoln represented the railroad so ably as their lawyer, he was helping to forge those bands of iron 
which already were at their destined work of binding together the nation. Binding it so firmly that even the great convulsion of the War of the Sixties did not break the bond. And the same railroads which for more than a century have done so much to create and preserve the unity of this nation are today just as important to its welfare, its safety, and its defense. Now here is Act Two of Shari, starring Gordon MacRae as Irini and Vivian Della Chiesa as Shari. <laughs> And so we went to Paris, Polly Rotz, his lovely daughter Shari, and I. How nervous we all were, for the famous gypsy violinist was to appear for the first time in ten years to play his famous Stradivarius. I was a mere fiddle player, delighted to take a back seat. Uh, that is, if Shari were in the back seat with me. shouldn't have come to Paris. I'm afraid something will go wrong. What can go wrong, Shari? Well, Papa isn't young anymore, and I, well, for the first time in my life, I feel too young. <laughs> Listen. Listen to the sounds in the air. Listen to what Paris is saying to us. Young love is everywhere. Take it while you can. Yes, I hear it. My darling, we must get ready for the command performance before the king of Messalia. I shall put on my Sunday best. The Contessa Mustari, the Marquis de Cado, Mademoiselle Charirat. She's wearing on her head the lampshade. Imagine anybody appearing at the royal performance wearing that terrible colored tablecloth. In Paris, the city of fashion, how can anybody wear those rags? Please. In my tiny village, these are the bright colors we wear. But I see that Paris is no place for a girl from the country. Simple little village made you test me Things are not the same here as they were. Country home, the men may call you queen. Here they only notice you because you're a queen. People laugh at everything you say. You'll be sorry that you came before you. It could sense you would be showing to the village you. There's no place I hope for you. Simple little village made you 
best beware. Things are not the same here as they were back there. In your country home, the men may call you queen. Here they only notice you because you're free. People laugh at everything you say. You'll be sorry that you came before you. It could sense you would be showing to the village would be calling. There's no place like home for you. His Majesty, the King of Massalia. It is now our pleasure to hear from one of the most celebrated violinists of our day. He has come here to play his famous Stradivarius the man whose melodies we have heard about for so many years. And now we shall hear them with our own ears. Ali Ras. Go on, go on, Ali Ras, play. Hi, hi, hi. Father, what's wrong? You're so pale. Your, your majesty, I, I... Father, are you all right? Your majesty, I, I cannot play. Uh, I have not played my beautiful violin in ten years. I have just kept it to, to look at, remembering in my head the, the lovely melodies of my youth. Uh, so, you see, this Stradivarius is no good to me. I might as well smash it into a million pieces. No, no, wait a minute. Could I have it for, for just a moment? Uh, take it, Herini. I, I give it to you. Tell me, Polly, was it this melody? My gypsy melody! How did you know it? That melody was never written down, only in my heart. It's the Strad, Polly. It's this violin. It's a magic violin. Stradivarius belongs to you now, Heini. To me, it was just a memory. But you have made it live again. My boy, we are most pleased. Thank you, Your Majesty. All my life, I've wanted to play on a magic violin. And to hold in my arms a girl as lovely as Shari. No, Irini. You will be the toast of Paris now. But I am just a village gypsy. And everyone laughs at me. My children, they will not laugh again. For I hereby bestow on you the title of the Count and Countess of Stradivari. Now go. Play. Stand. And the whole world will be young again. strong and blood grows warm beneath the 
scent of flowers. Music, light and laughter, bright, shall carry us along. Dancing with our hearts on fire, was one sweet song. Let us come and dance with joy. Chiesa will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Sam Hearn, who was Polly Rotts, and to Ted Von Eltz, stuffy singer in the entire company. Shari, with book and lyrics by Julius Wilhelm, Max Grunbaum, CCS Cushing, and E.P. Heath, and music by Emmerich Kalman, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. You know, friends, like so many of you, I was thinking today on Lincoln's birthday about how he worked to keep this a united country. His task could hardly have been done without the help of the railroads. A century ago at the time when Lincoln was serving as an attorney for two of the little new western railroads, which were to grow into great systems, the railroads already were beginning to bind the sections of the United States together. And today, the railroads help keep America united and strong. And now here again is lovely Vivian Della Chiesa. Thank you, Gordon. I certainly enjoyed playing Shari. And what can I say, dear, after I say I'm Shari? <laughs> oh, Vivian, you made a boo-boo. <laughs> well, it was a wonderful delight having you aboard the show train with us, and, and please, will you visit us again real soon? Oh, I'd love to, Gordon. What's your show next week? Well, it's our special Railroad Hour production of The Song of Norway. Vera Patina will be our guest star, and Dorothy Colder and Gil Russell once again will be her.